Beer 30, boys. All right, I'm just gonna hunker down here because I don't feel like moving the camera around because I'm a lazy piece of shit. Um, what we're gonna do today is install cams. We're putting the factory cams back in this. If you guys wanna see another video installing BC272 cams, I'll have it linked down below. Uh, I did a video with that on a non-VBTI motor a little over three years ago now, which is kind of crazy. This time, we're gonna be doing a VBTI head and putting stock cams back in it, but I'm still gonna show you how to uh, check clearances and do all that fun stuff while I drink a few brewskis. And if you guys are real OGs, it's kind of funny that I'm drinking Mick Ultra all the time now and bottle because I always drink Keystone because I always have, what is it? An ice cold Keystone. I digress. So what we're doing today is putting cams in. Uh, again, like I said, we're putting the factory cams back in the car. Uh, as you guys saw from the last video, we went ahead and put uh, all the springs, retainers, all that good stuff back in. Uh, and I made it really easy on myself by taking everything out in order and placing them in a plastic container so everything went back in the spot it was supposed to be in. So it made my life super easy. So yeah, so next up what we need to do is put the cams on and I'll show you what to do. All right guys, now before we put the actual cams in, what we're gonna do is use some of the CRC engine assembly lube. What you wanna do is be just put a bunch on. Uh, you don't have to be very conservative with this stuff. You go ahead and be pretty liberal with it and it put on a good bit. Uh, you don't want the, the cams getting scored up. Now these are cams that have already been in the motor, have oil on them and stuff, but I put this in as an extra safety precaution because when you start this motor up dry, the last thing you wanna do is have them mar up or nick up the head or mar or nick up the cams itself. So I recommend the CRC engine assembly lube. This is by far my favorite to use. Uh, it's easier to control than some of the other essential lubes out there, the red stuff. Um, it's just something I prefer. So just wanna throw that up there. And let's go ahead and put some of this on. All right guys, now it's time to put the cams in. Uh, the intake and the exhaust cam is different. The easiest way to tell with them, they're pretty drastically different. Uh, the front lobe on the exhaust side is half the size of the front lobe on the intake side and it's also longer too. So it's pretty easy to tell. You literally can't mess it up uh, when you put them in. So we'll go ahead and put in this exhaust one first. And you're gonna see it doesn't sit evenly or anything. You gotta remember these lobes are gonna sit perfectly in there, which I'll show you and adjust it. And how we have to clamp them down, there's a sequence we have to do to it also. Guys, just for reference, I wanted to show you. See how long the lobe is on here in the front? Uh, you can see the two extra oil ports and stuff, which again, I'll show you more of this here the further we get into it. And you can see the oil port that actually comes out and into the cam gear and stuff too. It's a pretty trick little piece. Um, I'll actually show you the cam gear and go a little in depth on that then too. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do next here is put the cam caps on. Now, they actually are numbered, directional, and everything's all labeled on from Toyota. One easy thing with it is too, with to make your life a little bit easier, is take all the bolts, and if you haven't already, like mine are already coated in oil, uh, coat the ends in oil before you put it down. This gives you like a molly coating type situation. That's what the Toyota book says. You could probably use molly coat if you would like. Uh, it's just a pretty much when you torque them down, but I believe it's to 10 foot pounds. I'll double check that in the book before we go through this and tell you guys exactly. I believe it's 10 foot pounds. It gives it a way to, take away from having binding up or resistance. So it's just a way to do it. So you use oil, molly coat, your ARP, whatever you prefer. Uh, it's just a way to keep it up from binding.
All right, guys, we're just about ready to crank everything down. You'll see there's a random screwdriver, and I'm like, Ryan, why is there a screwdriver in the cylinder head? And I'm gonna explain that. I'm trying to figure out where TDC is and which cylinder it's on right now. So it should be number six, I believe, number two, right? No, apparently not, Ryan. Nope, maybe it's number one. I can't remember yet. I guess it's number six and number one. I always forget the firing order of these things, so that's my fault. Please excuse my stupidity there for a second. Uh, but I'm trying to find top dead center, so I know it's those two right now. And then when you go down here, and this is again for the VBTI motor, guys. Uh, now for the uh, non VBTI, it's pretty similar, but obviously uh, the amount of teeth on your crank gear will be different. I think this has. 24 teeth versus 12 teeth on the uh, non VVTI. But on your little oil pump, you see a little dot there. And then on your crank gear, you'll see a little like dash. That is to represent TDC. So what I'm going to do is actually bring the motor slightly down from TDC. If my, my camera will focus, I apologize guys. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, I'm going to bring it down. You're probably asking, well, don't you want a TDC? Well, here's why I don't. Um, I'm going to be cranking these down and I, the last thing I want to do is be cranking this down and I actually force the valve into one of the top of the pistons. Don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to take this wrench and take that little notch and move it down past it just ever so slightly. Like, we'll put it right there, okay? That'll be enough to put them all slightly down, but enough that nothing is interference. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Ryan, how do you know if it's down far enough? Well, that should be plenty. Um, if you put it down that much, that should be more than enough uh, for right now, just so I can put this together. I mean, it's not that close, but it's close enough that you wanna do something like that. So put the camera back up now, and I'm gonna show you also the sequence on which uh, you need to crank these down and how to do it. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here is start with the exhaust side. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench here and there's a sequence to it here. So let me show you. So you're gonna mark these. Um, I'm gonna actually show you that one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, or seven, eight, nine, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. I just marked them one, two, three, four. I mean, the bolts right there don't matter. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you don't wanna crank down just one bolt because as long as this cam is, it starts to flex, guys. It starts to flex up in those centers. That's why there's a torque sequence to it. So you don't want to crank these the whole way down. So what you'll do is tighten this down when it feels snug, you move to the next one, snug that one down. Then you move to the next one and you follow the sequence that the book tells you. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the sequence in the book to follow guys. Uh, I hope you, you can see this clearly. So we're gonna go ahead and start here and this is kind of the boring part. All right, guys, you can see there, intake side or exhaust side is done now. Sorry about that. The exhaust side is done. Uh, now, what I have to do next is torque them down to 10 foot pounds. Now, one other thing I'm going to do differently that I don't do as the book follows, the book tells you to put in this cam cap right here, it tells you to put the seal in ahead of time. I usually crank all this down, I loosen these ones up, uh, I put the F toy to FIP. Uh, G under this, so there's sealant packing that we have to put under this. Again, I'll get closer up for that. And I also put in the cam seal here. Uh, guys, anytime you take out cams in and out, always replace the cam seals, period. Even if it's only been there a couple thousand miles, just replace it every time. Never reuse a cam seal. They're as cheap as they are. I just personally, it's not worth the chance of it leaking, especially how much you gotta do to get to them and the timing and stuff you have to deal with. Just don't do it, just replace them every time. Um, so next up we have to do the exhaust side and then we have to crank these all down to the book says exactly 14 foot pounds, 15 foot pounds won't hurt it guys. So if you want to go one pound over or get exactly 14 foot pounds as the book says you can. Um, and then I will show you that we need to put seal packing on this too. And then we also have to put the BBTI um, uh, sensors and stuff back in and the filter also which I'll show you too.
All right guys, so now we're putting the FIPG in the cam caps. It goes on the outside here. And we went ahead and put, or I should say, I went ahead and put on the cam seal there. You just slip it on, you put a little bit of grease on the inside of it. It uses, it says in the book MP grease, but just use some grease. I'll put this on and I'll torque all this down to 14 foot pounds. All right, guys, and I've got everything back together. Now, I just put the valve covers that are sitting on it with the cover along also, just because of the fact that I didn't want dirt and grime getting inside of it. Uh, the pans are on too, which I'm gonna do another video on that, how to put those all on. I'll show you guys that in another video. Um, so this is all done, and I am super freaking happy to have that on. Now I'm working on getting self powder coat and going through all that. I'm gonna use the radium press and plugs, which I found out today are not cheap at all. I didn't realize how expensive they were till here recently. So gonna be doing that. Just a bunch of other little things. Still waiting on the cam gears to come back from Night Run Garage. Once I get those back, I'll show you guys all that. They're getting powder coated or Cerakoted, I should say. So it should be really cool. So again, guys, thank you guys very much. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, what I'll be working on next here too is motor's almost done. You know, it's getting down to the part where it's just, you know, aesthetics and stuff like that. Uh, I have to do a little bit to the transmission, not much. I gotta figure out lines and stuff because the factory hard lines I won't be using. So I have to make my own custom soft lines which are designed for a transmission. I'll show you guys all that too to try and make it as simple as possible. Uh, what we're gonna be working on next is a lot with the body. The brake booster's gotta come out, the throttle cable, uh, a bunch of little things here. I almost wanna drop the subframe and all that stuff out of it too. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get it to the body shop, but that's the kind of stuff I'd like to do to it and have that stuff cleaned up and just out of the car. Uh, but that's just me being anal retentive. And guys, I have not forgot about my own car. We still have to do a battery relocation for this car this winter. It's just not my top priority because the car runs and everything does, it does everything it's supposed to right now. So that's just not on my top priority list right now. But it is something I am going to be doing. Uh, as soon as that time comes, I will be working with it and getting it done. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Do me a big favor. If you like this video, give it a big like and a thumbs up. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you guys very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.